Hello everyone, this is Ryan Farley from Customer Effects. I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of a new open source library that I have called the .NET Extensions Helper. What this uh, library gives you is the ability to quickly create .NET extensions uh, for UI in the SalesLogix client. So the embedding of things onto existing forms, creating of new tabs, the use of .NET dialogs all within SalesLogix, this removes some of the legwork needed to get that to happen so that you can just focus on the the actual uh, customization that you need to create and not how to get that embedded into the client. The project can be found on GitHub. It is open source called Net Extensions Helper and there's two parts to this assembly. Um, if you go to the GitHub home for this, you can see the address here on the screen, there's a section for downloads and you'll find three items underneath the downloads. One is the DLL that you'll use in .NET and then also a, a, a script API that's a bundle that you st install into your SalesLogix system and the two of the DLL and the bundle talk together to make all this happen. There's also a sample project in there that'll work with SalesLogix 754. Now this DLL that's compiled on this um, on the GitHub home is built for SalesLogix 754. Uh, I have plans in the future to have available assemblies there for all different versions of SalesLogix, but the .NET extension framework and core DLLs are very specific to the version of SalesLogix that you're using the extension for. So if you're not using SalesLogix 754, you'll want to download the source, which you can either do that by cloning the repository or when you go to the home of the .NET extension helper, just click this zip button here and you'll download all the source code and then you'll need to recompile that on your system so it uses your um, framework and core DLLs that you normally use to build .NET extensions with. So for this sample, I'm going to download the DLL in the bundle. Now that I've downloaded those two files, I need to install the bundle inside of SalesLogix and then reference that DLL in my new project. So I've already installed the bundle in my SalesLogix system. All I need to do now is create a new .NET project and reference that assembly in it. So I'm going to click New Project in Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new class library. call this extension test. Now I have my one class in here. I don't need that. I'm just going to delete that out of this project. What I want to do is add a user control. What I'm going to do is embed on a new tab a .NET grid that is going to be a pretty simple grid but just to, to paint the idea that we could do a lot more with it because it's a .NET form that's hosted on a tab in SalesLogix. So what we'll do is I'm going to create a new user control. I'll just leave it named user control one. And then I need to uh, add a reference to my uh, net extensions helper library. So I have that library now referenced and I need to make my user control inherit from a class within that assembly. So if I type out the full namespace fx.saleslogix.netextensionshelper.saleslogixcontrol and what that does is that makes this user control now embeddable inside of saleslogix with just a few lines of code. Um, part of what I can do here if I flip back over to the design view and bring up the properties dialog, I can see that there's now a new property here called SalesLogix record changed. That event, that event will fire every time the record in SalesLogix changes and it'll give to me the current ID. So if I look at that here, I now have this event handler wired up that will pass in current ID that, that represents the ID of the current record inside of SalesLogix. So let's just do a little simple dialog here. We're going to throw a grid on it. And 
and we will tell that to just dock to the full size of the control and then uh, to just to load some data in there we could do we, we do have some things available to us in here like we have um, built into my user control now is SLX application which I can use that to get to other things like connection string uh, I do have to add a reference still to the to the cellslogics.net extension DLLs so I'm going to browse out to my cellslogics folder and I'll just reference them from there there's two of them there's the core and the framework DLLs. Now you'll see that I can do things like this dot SLX application dot connection string. And you'll see everything that you have available in the application object inside of Cells Logics you have available here, including the connection string, which we could use to do an ADO connection. I'm going to do uh, uh, one of the big benefits of, of using .NET extensions is being able to use outside things that you don't normally get to use in a cell logics customization. I'm going to add sublogics to this project and that'll make it really quick and easy to, to retrieve some, some data to bind to that grid. Click install and now I'm using NuGet to get that and I now have sublogics installed here so I'm going to create a new repository And I'll pass to that the connection string. And then I'm going to bind to my grid. To the grid's data source, I'll do repo dot find. Oops. Oops, I've missed my new keyword there. No wonder why I wasn't getting that working. Now I can do repo.find. I'm going to be bringing back a list of contacts. This is going to be on an account tab. So I will bring back a list of contacts for that account. And my conditions will be where the con or account ID equals the current ID that I'm getting passed in. So that should be all I need. Uh, that simple little bit there is going to retrieve all the contacts for the current account and bind them in that uh, data grid. So I'm going to build this. Now over in Architect, we're going to build a, a SalesLogix form that's going to host this extension. So I'm going to create an account form. I'm going to make the uh, form fill the available client and now um, I do need something bound on this form otherwise the on change event won't fire properly that's just something that's always been the case in sales logics I'm gonna throw a label on there make it not visible and then bind its caption to the current account ID that way it'll fire the on change event the way we expect so the two things we need to use here is on the open event is when we're gonna load our extension and it's going to actually embed itself right on the form. We won't have to write any code to do that. It's, we'll just tell it, tell the net extension helper where to embed it. And so that we'll do that in the open. The other thing is on the change event, we're going to, to tell our extension what the current record ID is. Okay, what we want to do is add an include script. There's two scripts that are installed with the API bundle with the net extensions helper. We'll find them under the system family. One is called uh, FX net extensions helper extension control the other one's called extension dialog since we're doing an, ex an extension control that will be embedded on a tab that's the script we're going to select now that we have that added there's a few couple of lines of code that we need to do before we do that let's bring up the extension manager and let's add in our assembly that we created in Visual Studio just a second ago. So there's the DLL extension test. That's the one we created with our 
our form with the grid on it. I'm going to add that in here and we'll see that it brought in the net extension helper DLL as well and sub logics also. So now we need to pay attention here. Our title of our extension is extension test and then we also have our namespace here would be extension test dot user control one. So that's important because we'll need to reference that in our script. So the first thing we need to do is is create a variable of the extension control class. So we'll just call it ext and then in the form open we will create a new instance of that. And then we will also call the load method of that class and pass to it the names, the, the title, the namespace, the handle of where we want it embedded, and also a Boolean that indicates whether we not want it to resize to fill the container or not. So our, our uh, title we noticed here was called extension test. The namespace was extension test dot user control one. The handle of where we want to embed it, if we had a panel, we could give it the handle of the panel, uh, but we're just going to embed it right on the form. So we have the form dot hwind property. That's the handle of that form, and that's we're telling the extension library that's where we want to embed it. And then we'll say true to resize it to fill that control. That's part one, that loads it. We didn't need to set the context of the current record. So to do that, we'll just use our extension variable again and then set the current ID to the current ID of the form. And that's basically it. Let's save this as extension test. And now we can just flip over to cells logics We'll refresh it, and then we'll see our new form listed there under the More tabs. Here's our extension test. I'll select it, and now we have the the uh, basically the sub logics entities for those contacts bound to that grid. You'll see each one of them here. If I scroll over to find the contact itself information, the name values we have here. Uh, our first name and our last names. All that data is there. It, the sublogics entities bring back all of the information about the, the contact rows and that's what we're seeing bound to that grid. So you can see that we did that. In the extension itself, we really only had two lines of code and that was thanks to sublogics making that really easy. Uh, but we didn't write any code about that talked about embedding. We didn't do anything that says place this, embed it on this tab. We didn't do that. The, the net extensions helper library does that for you. And in cells logics, we just had those couple of lines of code to do some of the initial loading and the setting of context for the current record. Back in cells logics, let's bring it up here. So now as I move from record to record, I can see that that changes along with it. And that is, in a nutshell, how to use the extension control, um, the cells logics control uh, class in .NET to easily create a .NET extension that embeds inside of cells logics. In our sample, we embedded that on a full tab but it doesn't have to be that way. If we wanted to put just a panel here on the side of the account detail and load a .NET control in there, the library does support that as well. So it's just you give it the handle of the panel versus the handle of the entire form. Uh, I'll be following this up with another video that describes how to do callbacks and how to do dialogues as well. But I hope you enjoy it and give it a try. Thanks. Thanks.